Today I will answer a frequently asked question. If the moon is the reflection of the bigger earth, how is it possible that the orbit of the stars and the planets go in opposite direction? To answer that, first let's take a look at the different spheres surrounding earth. And let's presume that every layer is reflective. Mrs. Lex is standing in the room in front of three mirrors. The outer mirror is reflecting her whole body. The other two mirrors only reflect a part of her body. Let's put Mrs. Lex into a three-layered reflective ball. She will see herself three times, but at three different speeds. Because of time dilation, the three reflections will slow down. The outer image will be the slowest. The closest image will be near real time. So now I have made a time frame that is taking one minute. It is showing three reflections at three different speeds. The smallest reflection is making one rotation in one minute. The closest image is near real time and is making 30 rotations. The middle image is taking four rotations in one minute. That would represent a day, a week and a month. So the smallest image is representing the moon. Every month you will see a rotation of the outer reflection. Next, let's put the three reflections on top of each other. Ok, let's enlarge the second reflection and put it in front of the moon. Let's wait a bit. There you see the movement of the second layer in front of the moon. Now. Let's take the closest reflection, enlarge it even bigger. Day, night, and then you see the second layer behind it and you get two different movements. The closest would be the stars and the second layer would be the planets and the star systems. There you see it again. And in the back you see the moon. Now you see how planets and stars could move in a separate direction. So, as I was making this video, I thought, hey, the planets will be situated on a small piece of the moon, so it would be fairly easy to find all the planets. I used to think that the planets would be all over the moon, so now I know where to look. Let's zoom in to the place where I already found two planets. The planet Mars, Hadley C, and the planet Saturn, Linné. So let's take a look at the planets between Saturn and Mars, there is Jupiter and the asteroid belt. So, it was fairly easy to find Jupiter. It was called joy. What a joy to find Jupiter. Let's look at some NASA painting, the omelette. On the omelette you see this strange pattern. 
repeat it in the crater. So I thought, yeah, this must be it. So now we will look for the asteroid belt. Let's zoom in on Mars, Hadley C. Look what we found there, some mountains, sure, asteroid belt, of course, some mountains reflecting in the light, could be mistakenly seen as rocks flying in space, okay. So we found the asteroid belt. Let's move to the right from Saturn. We get to Uranus, nice picture of NASA, and we see Uranus and its six largest moons, very obvious. So we got Uranus. Let's move to the right again, to Banting, Neptune. Let's take another NASA painting the spot in the middle but the main reason I think this is Neptune is because of Triton when you look at this moon you see the two lines for people who are interested in the moons of Neptune the biggest one is Triton Alatea Proteus and Larissa. You wonder who invented all these names. Two planets to go. Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus are the only planets that have no moon. Left from Mars there is a place with lower contrasts. That is probably the reason you see no moons, as there are only two planets with the name in that area, it seems obvious. Here they are, all the planets, but there was a little surprise at the end. Because when you move to the right, what do you see at the edge of the universe? The Kuiper Belt objects. And as I know that the asteroid belt is a rock formation, well, I was pretty sure that the Kuiper Belt objects would be a rock formation too. So let's check it out. Well, 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 what have we got here? A rock formation, formed in a circle. Well, let's take a look at Wikipedia. That is a match, if I'm not mistaken. But there are planets moving in the middle of the Kuiper belt. That's impossible. No? Well, let me show it to you. Let's create two layers. Saturn, Uranus and Neptune on one layer and the Kuiper belt on the other layer. Let's move one layer. Now we move two layers at the same time in an elliptical form, one faster than the other one. But there was another surprise, because when you look in the middle of the Kuiper belt, you have three moons, Makey Makey, Homea and Pluto. But what is this big crater in the center? So, when you look at the explanation on Wiki, this big circle is a sun. So, the reflection 
in this crater is mistakenly seen as the sun. <sighs> oh my god. Well, you want the sun? You got one. Here it is. And by the way, Let's listen to a Nazi criminal. For example, Mars has the highest volcano in the world, in the known in solar system. <laughs> um, the highest volcano in the world, in the known in solar system. <laughs> the highest volcano in the world, yeah. Well, as we know now, the Germans first discovered that we live on a bigger world. So, Werner von Braun knows we are living on a bigger ball. So, when he is talking about the world, he is talking about the bigger ball. And everybody laughs, ha 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 ha. But those big scientists are laughing with their own stupidity. For example, Mars has the highest volcano in the world, in the known in solar system, <laughs> um, which mapped the Mar of the planet Mars thoroughly, the Mar of the planet Mars, the Mar of the planet Mars thoroughly. I think he wanted to say the Mars crater or the Mars area, but then he thought, hey, I'm making a mistake, and he corrects himself which mapped the Mar of the planet Mars thoroughly. For example, Mars has the highest volcano in the world, in the known in solar system. <laughs> um, that volcano is 16 miles high and has about a total volume, twice uh, as much as the largest volcano on Earth, which is the big island of Hawaii which when measured from the bottom of the ocean is, I believe, only 11 miles high. So this is twice as big, twice as voluminous. And also there's every indication that it was active in a relatively recent geological period, just judging from the very few meteoric impacts on the crater rim. The Washington Post reports NASA has confirmed a so-called city killer asteroid narrowly missed hitting Earth. What's more alarming, scientists say they had no idea it was coming. That is alarming. <laughs> They're supposed to know. Whoops. The asteroid about the size of a huge boulder was about 45,000 miles from Earth on Thursday. Well, next time an asteroid misses the Earth, don't worry. It's just a reflection. Bye. <laughs>